Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Vanessa. Y'all come on in. Y'all welcome. For first time visitors, thank you for clicking on the channel. I don't want to waste your time. We're digging right in to feed us. Ready? Spirit. Grab your sword and we're digging in. After we receive the promises of God, we want to maintain them. So let's chew on this a little while and let's start in the book of Joshua. In the 24th chapter of Joshua, first verse. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they prepared themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old times, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nature, and they served other gods. This is Abraham's family, serving other gods. There are no just right situations in life. It does not matter our background, where we came from, what we were doing, where I can remedy anything. This is Joshua following the patterns of Moses. God had Moses to repeat the history and the victories in the presence of the elders, and it was supposed to move from the elders to individual households. Keep repeating the victories of God. I'm going to mention three things. Listening to God, receiving from God, and holding fast to the promises. Go to verse 11. And when ye went over Jordan and came unto Jericho, the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Gerizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. We see victory there. This is an amalgamation of communities, not just a whole town of Hittites and Perizzites and Jebusites and Hivites, but there are remnants, just random citizens and small families. They're all mixed in here together, a melting pot. We're going to touch Canaan a little bit more in just a few minutes. Drive down to 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. We see a stipulation here. Serve ye the Lord. Let's turn over to Judges 1 and 17. And Joshua went with Simeon his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephat, and utterly destroyed it. And the name of the city was called Hormah. And Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof, and Eshkelon with the coast thereof, and Ekron with the coast thereof. And the Lord was with Judah, and he drave out the inhabitants of the mountain, but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley, because they had chariots of iron. Now it does not matter if they had chariots of iron, or they had chariots of wood, or chariots of stubble. If God wanted them to drive out those people, and they would have been gone. There's nothing impossible for God. There's a purpose here. Let's move forward. Same chapter. They're in battle. Let's go over to verse 28. And it came to pass when Israel was strong, that they put the Canaanites to tribute, and did not utterly drive them out. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer. But the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer among them. Neither did Zebulon drive out the inhabitants of Kitron, nor the inhabitants of Nahala, but the Canaanites dwelt among them and became tributaries. Neither did Asher drive out the inhabitants of Echo, nor the inhabitants of Zidon, nor Alab, nor Achim, nor Helba, nor Aflik, nor Rohan. The Asherites dwelt among the Canaanites the inhabitants of the land, for they did not drive them out. Neither did Naphtali drive out the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, nor the inhabitants of Bethna, but they dwelt among the Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land. Nevertheless, the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh and of Bethneth became tributaries unto them, and the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountains. They would not suffer them to come down to the valley. But the Amorites would dwell in Mount Heres. Ah, okay, you all can finish out 
that chapter and go down to verse 36 if you want. I don't want to keep wrestling with those names. We see the Canaanites was not driven out utterly. God's instructions when he sent the kings of Judah and Jerusalem into tribes to conquer them, he told them to destroy it utterly and leave nothing. Or he would tell them just kill the men. Take the spoils, take the children, take the women. They did not kill the men. They left remnants of people behind. These people would become a snare to them. Go over to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 7 and 1. At verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, here are these seven nations, the Hittites, the Gerasites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, and the Parasites, and the Havites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them, Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall you take unto your son. The reason was they would turn their heart away from me. Your attention would start turning away from God. But the attention don't just turn away from God and just be empty. It goes to another God. I touched on this in another video and you'll see the card up here. The Canaanites believed in child sacrifice. This was their form of worship. What was important to them is they had plenty of crop in the harvest season. So they sacrificed their children for the sake of gain. And they did it by any means necessary. They didn't hold to things like morals and values and loyalty and peace, purity, decency. That was not at the top of their value system. And God was teaching Israel new morals and values. They came out of Egypt with none. So we're talking about firstly, listen. Listen to what God says in the 24th book of Joshua, where we came from. They agreed when Joshua handed down, let's go back. Let's turn back to Joshua. 24th chapter of Joshua, go down to verse 17. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, and which did great things in our sight, and preserved us in all the ways wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from among us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwell in the land. Therefore we will also serve the Lord, and he is our God. Okay, they're making a promise now. They're right. They always made promises. They're no different from us. Okay, verse 19. And Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve other gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he has done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, No, don't, you don't have to worry about that. They said, We're going to serve him. We know how that turns out. They were not able to stay faithful, but we don't want to look down on them, right? We're reading this in hindsight. They was living it in real time. We're living our life in real time, and we don't always make the right decisions. And Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourself that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, he said, the strange gods which you have among you. Incline your ear unto the Lord of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve. And his voice will we obey. Joshua said, well, you have said a good thing. And I hope that you all can be faithful. I'm going to set up a covenant here. And write this down as a testimony. We're going to set up an altar here at Shechem. And we're going to set up a stone, a rock here as a memorial. Right here under this oak tree. So you all won't forget. We made this pact and this covenant today right here on this soil. We don't make those type of covenants today. We have to set up a stone, a rock, go write it on a tree. 
We can, if we want to, go carve something on a tree, go write post-it notes and stick some on the mirror, on the refrigerator, wherever you think that you will keep eyes on it to keep yourself in remembrance. I'm supposed to be following the way of the Lord. Let's move forward to the New Testament because the natural works of the Old Testament, we have these spiritual things that we need to keep covenant with, with our God, right? Second, let's land over in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one, we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other, the savor of life, unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God. Apostle Paul was rebuking the people here. His reputation was on the line. They were complaining about his ministry and his authority. So he wrote this letter to them saying, look, now you all, I come to you all with the authority of Christ and you're going to receive what I have or you're going to reject it. He said the principles and the morals and the code of ethics of God is death unto those who don't want it. If we want to hold, now this is new covenant, right? We saw in the Old Testament, we are applied under the law. We're under grace. This is grace teaching. This is not hate speech. There's nothing in the scripture you all that is supposed to be hate speech. This is all love talk. This is God's talk, whether we like it or not. The words of Christ is supposed to offend us sometimes. It's not supposed to be sweet. That tastes good. It's supposed to be sometimes kind of bitter. It's because it's not supposed to feel good to our flesh. This is to challenge our morality and our principles. All of us not beating up on nobody, but girding us up, saying stand up as a woman, stand up as a man, and have principle and discipline about ourselves. And it's not easy. That's why we all need each other. It's a body ministry in the earth. I need you all, and I hope you know you need me. We're sharpening one another in your own personality type. Don't ever try to mimic somebody else, or you look like, sound like a phony. Come authentic. Somebody will receive what you have to say. You a giggler? <laughs> now you know, you know, you talk. Now you know, you can straighten up. Stop doing that. Or if you're more stoic, no, that's not right now. We can make a better decision than that. However, you can come through. But coming through with salt, our mouth is supposed to be seasoned with the word of God. So the apostle Paul says it's a sweet savor for those who are interested in life. Isn't this phrase differently in another passage of the Bible? It's the word of God is stupid and foolishness because the, those of the world who are unrepentant cannot receive the things of God. It's foolishness. But those who are interested in life unto Christ, it's a breath of life. It's a wellspring of life. That's why the scripture always says, let those who have ears hear and let those who have eyes see. Spiritual eyes, spiritual ears. And you cannot open up your spiritual ears. You did not close them. You can't open up your spiritual eyes. You did not close them. This is a spiritual thing. Satan closed the eyes of your understanding. God has to open the eyes of, of our understanding. Another human can't open a human's understanding. You cannot go to a minister to get it open. That's illegal in the court of God because that human will try to be your surrogate God or you will hold them as your surrogate God and God won't allow that. He said, my glory, I will give to no other. His glory is in that soul and in your spirit, in your core of your body. Don't let people toy around with that soul. God does not like that. So we talked about listening and receiving, holding on. Holding to the promises of God. Let's talk about holding. Go over to Romans 1 and 28. You all hear me yelling on these videos. So I have not gotten a microphone yet. And I'm hoping that I'm coming through clear. Maybe after I get a microphone, I won't have to yell, but I don't know. Sometimes I just yell. Romans 1 and 28. 
not yelling at you all. I just get excited about I like reading the scriptures. It just tells us about ourselves. And I don't know about you all. I just find such humor in this a lot of times. It sounds like a cinematic drama. Chapter 1, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which committed such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So these are people with understanding, who study the scripture, who knows the scripture, us who said we are saints and we are followers of Christ, doing these things. And they're supporting other people who are doing these things. That says, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. God knows my heart. These are some shortcomings. These are flaws. We're not supposed to embrace it and celebrate it. At the end of chapter 1 there, it said the people are still doing this and then they're encouraging other people, keep doing it. God is all right. God knows your heart. He knows you have good intentions. That's not good enough to say, well, we're doing it and God knows your heart. God knows that the heart is stubborn and is wicked, yet we don't want to line up with the things of God because that pushes us past our comfort level. And it actually means we're changing our mind to say God is right and I'm wrong. Let every man be a liar and God be the truth. We shouldn't spit in God's face just to protect our ego and our pride. Yes, these are flaws because our spirit changed camps from the spirit of darkness to the spirit of light. Our spirit changed kingdoms, but the mind is still stuck in a kingdom of darkness. Your spirit can sit in you like this. He's very uninterested and he's weak. We have to spend time with God privately so the soul can get in trouble, the body will suffer, and we won't hear from God. When we hear people say, well, what does God's voice sound like? I can't hear God. It's because of these shortcomings. The ears will become dull. But God has a remedy for these things. All is not lost. He don't just throw us away and say, get away from me. Chastisement has to come in. It's to tat -a tat tat our head to say, stop it, stop it. And some of us learn fast and some of us learn slow. I contend to be a slow learner. He has to tat -a tat tat that head and that's fine. And then I'm just left crying and getting myself together and say, well, I brought that on. We have to take responsibility for ourselves. So we have to listen to God, receive from God, and then hold fast to God's promises by being obedient. Do not begrudge the chastening of the Lord. It's a good thing. It's to help us to grow us up, to prune us, so we can be in the place that God wants us to be. And we can benefit and have his promises because the promises of the Lord is yes. But we have to do it God's way to get the yes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, you all. Thank you all for sitting with me. I hope I said something that you can ponder and that was enlightening and you all come back to visit again. Keep turning the word over in your mouth and mulling over it. You all take care. Bye-bye.